Every time we touch the feeling that we get And if it's meant to be, it'll be so Don't forget, so if it ever come down There are probably thousands of teenagers in the Bronx who dream of making it as a rapper. Me sweet talking yeah, me just hugging yeah, holding your hand just to get up and touch it, yeah. I'm so but Robert Griffiths might be one of the few who dream of going to college first. Even though I want to be a rapper and stuff like that, there's so much feels in like music that I can do and go to school for and learn so I can have a better opportunity and advantage over a rapper that didn't finish high school and didn't go to college. So that made me like, you know, really think and say, yo, I want to go to college. <laughs> I want to be an educated rapper. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I need her. So I tell these chicks I see you when I see ya. Cause she's a Today, this ambitious 17-year-old is singing for his friends for the first time. The feelings get deeper. We want to change chain my life like Katrina, but I can't leave her. Thanks to a remarkable high school, they've all got big dreams. Stephanie wants to be an environmental engineer, Rashidat a reconstructive surgeon, and Aaron an electrical engineer. I used to think love was stupid, and if that's true, then I'm just straight foolish. These students at the Bronx Lab School are clear winners in New York's education revolution. Driving the reforms, as well as inspiring Julia Gillard, is New York's controversial schools chancellor. Our vision from day one was not a great school system. Nobody ever sent their kid to a school system, they sent their kid to a school. And our vision was a system comprised of great schools. Joel Klein was brought in seven years ago to fix New York's ailing network of 1,500 schools. When I took this job, the most shocking fact to me was I would walk into high schools in New York City and I would see kids who were sharp, who'd been in the system for a decade and couldn't read the words on a page, could not decode, much less comprehend the words on a page. I don't think we should make excuses for that. I think we should fix that. Robert Griffiths is running late for English. Hello, other late person. <laughs> Teachers here monitor their students okay, closely. The school, Bronx Lab, has become the poster child for Joel Klein's reforms. Okay, We're on page 36. It's one of six small schools housed in what was one of New York's worst, Evander Child. Evander was enormous, overcrowded, chaotic. The place was out of control. The city stepped in and felt that there needed to be a change. The city now boasts about the turnaround of Evander Child in a TV ad campaign. The building may be the same, but the school is very different. Let's get to class, let's get to class. All right, folks, let's go, let's go. Maturity, 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 maturity. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Principal Mark Sternberg has a master's degree in education and an MBA from Harvard. He was hand-picked by Joel Klein to run this school when he was only 27. If I had only one thing to say, the reason why Bronx Lab has been successful, it is because the chancellor communicated very clearly to us what we had to accomplish and then left the rest up to us. <laughs> I haven't seen you in like a month. No, it wasn't. Yes, it has been. No, it so I expect when you come in my classroom, you're dead silent and you're catching up on all your work. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Claire? Oh yeah, it could be Claire. The Chancellor has given principals a degree of autonomy that's still unheard of in Australian public schools. Okay, so we now need to find a word that... Ten years ago, a school principal did not have the freedom to set his own budget. He was told how many teachers he had to have, how many support staff he had to have, how many guidance counselors he had to have, and, and more or less, the job description of all of those people. If a school a decade ago was creative in some of the ways that we have been creative, they would be breaking the rules. Mm. A 99. I did it. What took you three years? That's great. Look at that. 
and he can do it. Good job. He's a no excuses guy. He doesn't say, well, you gave me hard kids, so I shouldn't be expected to perform to the highest levels. And what did he do? He focused very heavily on attracting great teachers, which he was able to do, because people want to be around a great leader with a powerful and passionate vision. Was that loyalty or was that gossip? Oh, no. That's gossip. Okay, tell me why. Because the principal also focused his teachers on really getting to know their gossip. students. Gossip. It's, it's not loyalty. It's gossip, gossip, gossip because he told you like, like in trust. Yeah, okay. told this is Robert's advisory class. Throughout their time at Bronx Lab, students meet in the same small group four times a week with the same advisor to talk about what's happening in their lives. And um, me and my dad had like a conversation, like an actual conversation, a heartfelt conversation, which kind of like made me feel a lot better and feel a lot closer to him. And I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> um, there is a phenomenon documented, researched, known to be true, that affects low-income minority students um, in radical ways. And this idea that they walk into most schools and there is a, in the air, a sense that they cannot be successful. There is an expectation of failure. And if students know that they are not expected to succeed, then what do you think happens? Of course, they don't succeed. Like most of my education, I didn't have no support, not from family, not from friends not from teachers or nothing like that. So it kind of like, 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 has your mindset, like nobody cares, so why should you even care about it, you know? You know, I got people over here that's really, that don't even know me like that. They only know me for like a good two years or three years, and they're like, they care so much about me, and they want to be, they want to see me be so successful, you know, that, that like, that makes you want to change yourself. <laughs> So like you're talking about this part down here, right? Yeah, like I'm trying to sign up for the EOP program. Okay. Bronx Lab invests heavily in its students' futures. It even has two staff dedicated solely to helping students with their university applications. It's not like you want to teach people how to be, you don't want to teach music, you want to produce it. So it's a little bit different. The school can afford these extra resources. It receives millions of dollars in funding from donors like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation a fact not lost on the system's critics. Their question with schools like Bronx Lab is whether or not they can be brought to scale. Um, and if you think about this in terms of uh, cars, what you have with Bronx Lab is really you know, a Cadillac or a Rolls Royce approach to education, which is fantastic for the kids who go there. But on the other end of the spectrum, you've got kids who don't have any car at all. They're really not getting the kind of education that these other kids are getting. And we, when we see that, we worry about increasing inequality. At Columbia University, a PhD student has become a thorn in the side of New York's Department of Education. So Edgewonk Ed is the blog that I write. Um, it's Jennifer Jennings has been subjecting Chancellor Klein's claims to rigorous statistical analysis. In the best case scenario, you could argue that New York City has improved achievement, but it has Among her findings, the gap between students from different ethnic backgrounds has widened. You know, the worst case scenario is that what we see on the national test, that achievement hasn't in fact improved at all, um, and we've increased inequality. None of those things sort of look good as an advertising slogan, do they? No, they don't. Is it fair to compare the achievements at a place like Bronx Lab to the achievements at other public schools when it's so much better resourced? No, it's, it's absolutely fair. I will show you all sorts of schools, and I am confident that schools throughout the city can get the same kinds of results because there's lots of schools like Bronx Lab that are getting those results, no question about it. Education researchers aren't Joel Klein's only critics. He's also been at loggerheads with the New York Teachers Union, which is hosting this conference. You know, from the day I took this job, people told me, we will never fix education in America until we fix poverty. And I've told those people they have it exactly backward, folks. We will never fix poverty in America until we fix education. Klein has had a turbulent relationship with union boss Randy Weingarten. The most controversial of his reforms have seen schools closed down and principals sacked. 
ideas that are also raising hackles in Australia. Thank you and God bless you for being here today. If you get a grade of an F or a D, we'll close your school down. We'll terminate principals on that basis and we'll also provide rewards for our teachers and for our principals. A principal based on the school's performance on our accountability can get an additional $25,000 in a bonus. I want to say it differently. It's not yes we can, it's yes we will. Thank you very much everybody. After hard-fought negotiations, teachers have now embraced the reforms. But despite receiving $14 million in bonuses, they haven't embraced Klein. I would say that the relationship with Transit Klein has been challenging. What I think happened was initially we were hopeful, and then afterwards we became very wary um, because um, the Chancellor just wanted to make the union and the teachers the scapegoat and the, you know, and to point the finger um, at us as the culprits for everything society hasn't done to help children. Last year, the union subjected Klein to an evaluation of its own. Among the 60,000 teachers surveyed, his approval rating ranged from just 12 to 23 percent. That survey was done by the union during a time when we were actually having a, a big dust up over the, the teacher performance standards that I talked about and we're in the middle of a budget cut. But look, I'd be the first to admit I want to improve my performance. Klein's critics say Australia's Education Minister Julia Gillard should think twice before buying American. I think that if you were under the impression that there was going to be a, a miraculous rebirth of your schools um, as a function of looking at a lot of the PR in New York City, you'd end up with um, quite a disappointed education minister. Students at Bronx Lab don't care about the politics of these reforms or the research of social scientists. They care about the fact that someone now cares about them and their education. Last year, the school celebrated its first graduation. A remarkable 95% of students graduated, more than twice the average for the Bronx. Teachers should, like, we, sh we should all have teachers like we do at Bronx Lab. Those, those that care about us outside of the classroom and inside of the classroom. Those that want to come and help us be the best people we can be. The people that want to help us realize what we want to do. The people that want to help us realize that we are so much better than what our environment tells us to be sometimes.